In this final overview, we are now going to discuss a new feature for event level data. This feature allows us to add styles to the event layer based on data within the program. By using this feature, we can take data element values from within a program and generate categorizations which we can display on the map itself. This means we can take values from option sets, numeric values such as integers or percentages, and yes-no or yes-only values, and generate a legend or set of categorizations which we can use to display different values directly on the map. As an example, let's use data from the inpatient morbidity and mortality program. In this program, I have an option set which allows me to define the patient's final method of discharge. I want to use this option set in order to identify events which have different methods of discharge selected within this program. In particular, I am interested in identifying those patients who either died or were transferred for more serious care. I can make a map which shows only these two options and also differentiates these individual events using different colors based on the criteria I have selected. We can see an example of the map that is displayed now where all the modes of discharge are displayed. The different responses have been assigned different color codes. While I have been able to filter out events for some time, I can now see the individual responses using different categorizations on the map itself. In the GIS app, all of the different responses would be displayed in the same color. It was not possible to create categorizations based on different responses and apply them to the map in the previous GIS application. In order to update our map so it only displays those patients who have died or were transferred, I'm going to go ahead and edit the layer for the map. To change the criteria and review how the style has been applied, we will look at both the filter and style options that are available on the event layer. The filter allows me to decide which events I want to display on the map. Let us filter out only patients who died or were transferred. In the Style tab, I can now assign different colors to the options contained within the option set for this data element. We can see that it will assign different colors for each option by default. We can always change these colors if required. Note that for numeric data elements, we can use either automatic or predefined legend types, just like when working with aggregated thematic layers. We can see this if I select Weight and KG as a data element to style the map on. Here you will notice that I can select from either an automatic or predefined legend that will apply this legend to the numeric data values associated with this data element. Let us switch back to the mode of discharge to continue with our example. After we update the map, we can see that the individual options have been displayed on the map in different colors. If we zoom in, we can see this a bit more clearly. These items represent individual events, each with a recorded response of either transferred or died based on the color it has been assigned. We can see in this example, those patients that were transferred are identified in green color, while those patients that have died have been identified in orange color. This feature can be very useful to differentiate responses for event level data, as we are no longer restricted to one color for every event, even when those events have different responses for the data elements within the program. This has been a brief overview of the new Maps app within DHIS2. We can see that there is a completely redesigned interface packed with useful new features that have been added since DHIS 229. If there are any additional questions about the new Maps app or any of the specific concepts discussed in this four-part overview, please do not hesitate to let us know.